I'm a mom of two little girls, ages three and one. I'm also a full-time teacher, and I'm super passionate about my job. My name is Danielle, and I am a Miraculous Mama. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Miraculous Mamas podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Joy, and we believe in empowering women through storytelling and education. And we have such a fun episode today. We have Lindsay Arnold Kusick here, who is pregnant. You guys know her from Dancing with the Stars, but we just have such a fun conversation talking about pregnancy and um, just her how she and her husband met uh, and dancing and all sorts of goodness. And she is just such a delight to talk to. Uh, before we dive into the interview with her, we're going to continue our little introduction uh, birth plan series. We've talked about uh, preparing for your GBS test. We've talked about burnix. We've talked about all sorts of different things. And today I'm just going to touch on delayed cord clamping because it is something. So as a doula, um, I started practicing in Vegas years ago and at the time, not one provider would do it. And it is something that is very beneficial for your children and now more research is coming out saying that it is something that you should definitely consider putting in your birth plan and talking to your provider about. So uh, according to the American Pregnancy Association, uh, it can be very beneficial when you allow the cord to... Cl- uh, You don't clamp it right away and you allow it to pulse for 25 seconds up to five minutes after giving birth. It allows blood to transfer from the placenta to the baby, uh, sometimes increasing the child's blood volume by up to a third. There's tons of amazing iron stores in there, uh, which is really good for healthy brain development. Also, according to the uh, ACOG.org, which is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, it talks about how uh, delayed umbilical cord clamping increases hemoglobin levels at birth and improves the iron stores in the first several months of life, which may be very favorable for developmental outcomes. Uh, It can prevent anemia. A lot of kids can sometimes be anemic in the first six months of life. And with delayed cord clamping, you see that less and less. But with any decision that you're making, it's also really important to know um, not only the benefits, but the the potential risks and things like that. Um, The only downside that they can see is that sometimes there is a small increase in jaundice that might require phototherapy uh, in a certain group of infants. So there's the benefit of getting all that extra blood and iron stores and uh, that helps with brain development and preventing anemia, but there is a very slight increased chance of having jaundice. So I can actually say in all my years practicing for anybody who has done it, I have not seen a jaundice case, but I know that that research is out there that does back that. So as long as you have the information to make the best decision for yourself and for your family and have this conversation with your healthcare provider, that to me, I feel like is what counts. I know that it's something that we're planning on doing. It's a standard practice where... Uh, I am delivering. So, and we do touch on it next week. (laughs) A midwife is going to be on and she's going to just touch on it briefly. But um, I just wanted to go over this. So if you are making your birth plan, definitely look into delayed cord clamping. I'm going to leave the links to these articles uh, in today's show notes. Uh, But I'm really excited for today's interview. We have such a fun conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and start the interview with Lindsay so you guys can hear all about her pregnancy and what she's been up to. 
Hey everyone, I have Lindsay Arnold Cusick here with me and you all know her as she graces the stage on Dancing with the Stars, but we're going to get to know her a little bit deeper today. Uh, I'm so excited to talk to her because we're both pregnant, so I'm excited to hear her, her, yeah, her experience and what's going on in her life. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. Of course. Thank you for having me. I am so excited and I love that you are also pregnant. We can chat about all the things. It's going to be yes. perfect. <laughs> yes. Um, before we dive into my passion, which is pregnancy, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Dancing with the Stars because there's been so many changes made lately. Yeah. And I'd love, has been. To, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I heard that Tyra is now taking over as host. Yes, she is. So they just announced last week um, Tom and Aaron will not be hosting the show anymore. Um, I will say this was super sad for me to hear. I mean, we are such a close knit family. Like, I feel like people say that, but they don't actually understand that we truly are like family. So saying goodbye to any family member is never easy, especially when someone like Tom, who's been there since the beginning and Aaron, who has been such an incredible addition to the show over the past couple of years it is going to be so hard to see them go. But at the same time, I'm so excited for them and know that they have so much in store for them. And I just cannot wait to see what they do next. I will be watching 1000%. I was already kind of sad because I was going to be missing them anyway. I wasn't going to be a part of this next season, but I was hoping to be able to at least watch them on the show. So I am definitely going to miss seeing them. They are such an incredible part of the show and have made, made so much of the show. I truly believe that they brought so much to it. So they will for sure be missed. And I really look forward to seeing all the incredible things that they do. And then, yeah, they announced that Tyra Banks will be hosting. I've never met Tyra. I don't know her personally. I really do look forward to meeting her and seeing what she brings to the show. I mean, over the years since season one, the season, the show has been on for so long now. So naturally there have been a lot of changes and, I think everybody is kind of anxious to see how it's going to be, but I do know that the show has been around for a long time because of so many reasons and because people love to watch it. And at the end of the day, it is about the celebrities that are on and their journey and their process. And so it'll be really cool to see how Tyra fits into that sort Mm -hmm. of, um, into the family. And I look, I really look forward to watching. I am very excited to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, Any rumors of a co-host for her? You know what? I have not heard anything. I don't know. I honestly have no idea. I think the show could work with one or two and I think it, and it has in the past. So yeah, I, I truly have no idea. I think it would be really fun, but it also maybe wouldn't be necessary. So it'll be interesting to see, but I feel like within the next little bit, we'll start to hear about anything like that. Yeah, for sure. All right. We're going to take a quick break to talk about the proven learn to read program that is powered by your child's passions, and that is Homer. Homer memberships includes two apps, uh, their stories and Homer reading, four customizable profiles included with each membership. Uh, Their reading combines your child's passions and current reading level to create a personalized learn to read plan. It's for ages two to eight, and it's proven to work in just 15 minutes a day of Homer reading It was shown to increase early reading scores by 74%, you guys. So Vito and I have done so much prepping for pregnancy and birth, and now we have been looking into parenting. We're like, okay, how do we work at home with our kids, prepare them for school, and just even looking for different apps or things or books to help with us become good parents. And that's how we discovered uh, Homer. And it's such a cool program. I'm so glad that we looked into it. We went online and read all about their website and their apps and how they have this research-backed system that is kid tested and is proven to help your child enjoy their reading. It's designed by reading or learning experts and it is such an amazing program. And right now, back to school looks different for everybody. Uh, We're all adjusting to new normals in our lives and 
This is something that each of you can implement in your home. I know where I'm at in Illinois, they they just announced that everybody's going to start remotely this year and just school moving forward. We're not even sure how it's going to look, but uh, it's still such an amazing idea to get that foundation for your kids at home and uh, get their learning skills and reading skills boosted. It is safe and easy. Homer is ad-free. It's safe and easy for kids to use. And instead of engage with educational content and activities, it is allowing parents to work from home or get a break to take care of other things like getting laundry done or enjoying a hot cup of coffee, which I heard is very rare for moms, uh, and it's personalized. The program is fueled by kids' interests and grows with them as they build their skills. So while they are deepening their love of learning, lessons and activities are personalized by your child's age, interests, and reading level. Homer's online lessons translate to offline skills and knowledge. They have, again, so many amazing programs on there. I love that it uh, grows and reads like or grows with your kid uh, and that it's fueled by their passions. Uh, it's super easy to use. We downloaded the app, like I said, just to take a look at it because we're just trying to get a jump start on some things and and see what uh, what is out there for our kids and for this little nugget that's going to be coming here soon. We have a great offer for you guys too. Visit learnwithhomer.com slash mamas to start a free 60-day trial. That's learnwithhomer.com slash mamas to start a free 60-day trial. Now back to the episode. Um, so since you're having a baby and Artem's having a baby, have you been in touch with him at all about yes, his journey? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I've actually chatted with Artem and Nikki. Um, Artem has been a close friend of mine now for, oh my gosh, it's been like almost six years that I've known him. So it's really cool that we're both going through this huge change at the same time. We're both going to become parents. We're both going to have like a new person in our lives that are going to be the center of our world. And it's been very cool to talk to both him and Nikki just about the changes and about how it's like really shifted our perspective on what matters and what's the most important thing in life. And it's been very fun to know that I have like their support, but also have them to kind of watch and look after because she's going to be having her baby before me. So it'd be cool to see that process. Yeah, I know. Um, and I mean, it seems like people are kind of getting pregnant. Do you think that somebody else from the show is going to get pregnant soon? That's the thing is it's funny because all of us girl pros were kind of in the same mentality of like, we're all very excited and ready to be moms. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if all of them start getting pregnant <laughs> really soon after because we all went on tour just barely and we all were talking about it. Everybody was like, yes, like that's what I want. There's nobody that was like, oh, I don't really want that yet. Everybody was kind of in the mentality of we are so excited to have kids, but just trying to figure out the appropriate timing for them individually. So it'll be fun. I'm excited. I'm like trying to like, I don't want to like make them do it, but I'm like, guys, <laughs> this is the best thing ever. Like, trust me, pregnancy is so rewarding already. And I'm very excited for our baby to come. So I'm trying to like give them a little bit of like a, you'll, you'll love it. I All right. Some pregnancy <laughs> fever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Which well, is, I mean, I think it's hard to do sometimes. It's, people don't always believe me and sometimes it can be hard, but for the most part, it's such a cool experience. Yeah. I would love to dive into it. So, I mean, the way that you you're talking, well, first of all, you're glowing. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you have a glow going thank you. on. Um, you're very, you are too. It's the pregnancy glow. It's yeah, just a thing. I guess. You're like, sometimes you feel it though. Sometimes you don't. There's some days I'm like, where is it? I need it right now. Right. Come back. I know. Now that it's summer, the other day we had a hundred degree day out and my husband and I were out and about. And I'm like, it's like, sometimes it might be a pregnancy glow. Sometimes it's the pregnancy sweat, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happening. Like, Whatever it is, we're going to go with the glow. It's yes, fine. Yes. Um, so how many weeks are you now? I am just over 24 weeks. Okay, awesome. So yeah. the, they say the second trimester is the, the babe, like the honeymoon phase of pregnancy. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling that. <laughs> I'm like kind of scared because I guess I'm kind of close to being out of that. But it's been great. I, I mean, there are 
things here and there that come up. Like my body has definitely shifted dramatically as far as like my hips. I have a lot of pelvic pain lately. So I feel like physically there's a little bit more pain. My belly's getting bigger and just things feel just off. Like working out doesn't feel the same anymore. But as far as like, I have so much energy. I feel normal. I'm not getting nauseous. I don't feel like I'm needing to like in the first trimester, I seriously, if I wasn't eating, I felt like I was going to puke Mm -hmm. nonstop. So it's nice that I feel like my diet feels a little more normal. I have more energy. It's just kind of, I can tell my body's shifting a lot more and I'm noticing it a lot more, which is really fun. It is fun to like see that you're pregnant and be like, yes, I'm pregnant. It's not just like floating. It's actually a baby in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you guys actively trying when you got pregnant? Yeah, we had been trying for about four months, so not crazy long, but even before those four months, like we were very ready to have a kid. It just wasn't really the right timing, but like I would say for about a year before we even started trying, we both were like so excited for it to be the right time. So we were definitely ready. So those four months, it wasn't long, but then at the same time, knowing for so long that we wanted to have a kid, it's, it can be tough. I mean, no matter how many time months you wait, I feel like it's a tough thing and you can always like worry and stress about it, but we feel so grateful for the timing and the way everything worked out. Yeah, for sure. Did you feel, cause my husband and I talked a lot about, um, the trying phase, right. And how, yeah you hear so many people how that could affect their relationship or it can be really stressful. And we just really wanted it to be fun. (laughs) So like, but did you feel stressed out every single month, like taking a pregnancy test or like we got to have sex right now? Yeah. So we didn't feel stressed out, but we definitely didn't have a normal circumstance going on when we were trying to get pregnant. So we decided to get pregnant at the very end of my last Dance with Star season. So that was in November. And immediately following that, I headed out on the road with the Dancing with the Stars tour. My husband works full-time in Utah, so he was not with me. So we weren't really stressed about it, but we did have to put in like extra effort. Like I had to plan weekends for Sam, my husband, to come and fly down to me on tour so that we could have sex and we could get (laughs) pregnant. I'm like, this is like, we're like working for this, which it was so funny. And honestly, it was fun because it was just like, okay. And we were very much in the mentality of like, we've seen, we've had a lot of friends and family members who struggled. I don't want to say with infertility, but just, it took them longer than they wanted to, to get pregnant. And we saw the stress and the, just like the, the difficult times that that brought for them. So we both agreed that when we began to get to get pregnant, we would keep the mentality of everything happens when it's supposed to happen. There's a reason for everything. And we really tried to like have that mentality. And I feel like we did a pretty good job. So it was fun because it wasn't stressful. We weren't stressed about it, but it definitely was work. Like we were literally scheduled. It was like conjugal visits. We're like, okay, <laughs> come on, we got to do this. Like it was just so funny and such a weird, like normally he'd come out and visit me, but this time we were literally scheduling it around my ovulation. And that's also a hard thing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is when I'm ovulating, but it was just interesting because we really did have like a three-day window of like, okay, this is our shot. If it doesn't work, try again next month. So. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. But yeah, I can see how that could also kind of be fun. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was like a new thing. It was just like, okay, this is like, this is new for us. And obviously we were on a tour bus on the road. Like it was not typical circumstances for us, but obviously it worked out in the end. So yeah. Well, and then, so you got pregnant right around when a lot of the pandemic stuff started happening. Yeah. Yeah. So how, what was that like then? So I was actually still on tour when I took my pregnancy test and like about like a week or two before is when things started getting like, we knew that it was going around, but it was still kind of in that phase of like, are we in a panic or are we just kind of, is this just like any other flu? So it was like the week or two before that, it was kind of like, okay, like we, we didn't know on tour. We're like, maybe we won't do any more shows or maybe they'll start canceling. But it wasn't quite to the point yet where we were like, oh, we're for sure getting sent home. We're going into like a full on quarantine. So I remember taking the test and having a show that night and all shows all that week. And then about five days after taking the test, we get a call and they canceled all of our meet and greets. Cause they're like, due to everything, we're not going to do meet and greets anymore. Cause every day we would be 
taking pictures with 150 to 200 people. So we're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then about two days after that, they called and they're like, we are just, we're sending you all home tomorrow. This is your last show tonight. I mean, we really got the news about an hour before going on stage for our last show. So it was so fast, so crazy. I mean, at the time, like I had known I was pregnant for about a week now. And at the time I was like, okay, this is honestly kind of a blessing in disguise for me personally, as far as like, it could be very dangerous for me to be, cause I would have been on the road for another month doing the tour. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be feeling over the next little bit and with sickness and everything. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise for me to be sent home. But then obviously it's been so terrifying and it's a lot and like so devastating for so many people that it's, it didn't really feel like that. But at the same time, I'm like, I, I look back and I think it worked out very well timing wise for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I mean, in your first trimester, I mean, I'll have you tell us about yours, but you had mentioned, I mean, you didn't feel very well. So that's not a bad time to be home. Oh, exactly. I mean, here's the thing. I know myself and no matter what I was feeling, like if I was still on tour, I would just do it. I'd be fine. I'd get through it. I would push through. Like that's kind of just a dancer's mentality. Like you get hurt. If you have a performance, you still do it. You just Mm -hmm. dance through the pain. So I definitely would have made it work, but it wasn't a bad time for me to literally be forced to be home stay in my house with my husband, not go anywhere. Like I didn't really feel like going anywhere anyway. So it kind of was like a good time. And it also was a good time for me to kind of realize that like, that's okay, that it's okay to slow down. It's okay to not have like a crazy busy schedule, always be traveling, be working. And it helped me sort of get accustomed to that, which I think is important because obviously after I have our baby, I'm not going to be able to do every single work thing that comes up. And I'm glad that I had that time to sort of like sit with myself and be like, this is okay. Like mentally, it is totally okay for me to have this day and just grow my baby. And Mm -hmm. that was, it was a hard transition, but at the same time, I think it was really good for me. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We're going to take a quick break to talk about how right now you can save $1,500 or more a year by using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. When you're shopping for a policy that could last for a decade or more, those savings really start to add up. Vito and I recently went on this journey and we're thinking a lot about our futures and just trying to be smart. And we were like, we should probably get life insurance. And There was tons of information out there, but going to policygenius.com was so easy. They make it such a seamless process for you. So I'm going to tell you exactly what we did. Step one, you go to policygenius.com and in minutes you can work out how much coverage you need and compare quotes from top insurance to find your best price out there. Next, you are going to apply for your lowest price, and then the Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and red tape. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance company. So if you hit any speed bumps during the application process, they will take care of everything. They even have policies which allow eligible customers to skip the in-person medical exam and do it over the phone. That kind of service has earned Policy Genius a five-star rating across over 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. And we are one of those reviewers saying that they are definitely five-star service. They are so easy to work with and they make it a smooth process for you and your partner and your family. Uh, And they're just, they're so good at what they do because we were clueless going into it. We're like, how do we get life insurance? Where do we start? Where do we go? And they just guided us through the whole process. So if you need life insurance and you're looking for um, just to get that coverage for your family, head to policygenius.com right now to get started. And you could save $1,500 or more a year by comparing quotes on their marketplace. Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Do you feel like you missed out on anything because of the pandemic. I know for me, basically my whole second trimester was in lockdown. And that's like when I experienced the most growth and changes in my body. And I'm like, I'm, I want to go out and look cute. And I want like, I want my friends and family to like comment on my cute bump and like how I am. And I just felt it was really hard because I 
missed all of that. And now I'm like eight months pregnant and I'm like, yeah. Hey, I don't even, I can't reach my legs to shave. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, now I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> I don't want to get cute. I just want to be comfy. Yeah. I totally get, it. yeah. I feel like, I mean, so I'm in Utah. Things have been a little bit, um, things have started to be a little bit more lax here for the past couple weeks, but definitely for my first trimester, it was like, I wasn't seeing anybody. And honestly, I don't feel like the only thing I think that was different was as far as like my appointments go, like Sam couldn't come to the appointments with me. He couldn't come to the ultrasounds, but I could take videos and I could like keep them updated in that way. So that was the only thing I felt like was a little bit different. Also, like we did a gender reveal and I only had my immediate family there. I definitely would have had like friends and, but then when you think about it at the end of the day, like those are the people I care about the most. And I'm grateful that I could even just be with them. So it's interesting. I think now that I'm like actually showing and I have like, I can wear like outfits and show off my bump. It, I think I'll start feeling that a little bit more, like you said, because yeah, you want to like share it and you want to go out and be like, I'm pregnant. Like, yeah. look at me, ask me about it. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> it's kind of a weird time because we don't have that. And also, I mean, so many uncertain things of like labor, like, I don't know what's going to happen, what state we're going to be in when I actually go into labor. And will I be able to have my husband with me at the delivery? It's just, it's hard. You Mm -hmm. just don't know. I'm sure. And I mean, you're even closer than I am. So it's probably something that you think about. Yeah, absolutely. We've thought about it a lot. Um, Did you have an idea of, did you have an inkling of what the gender of your baby was going to be? Were you like, oh, I really feel like it's a boy or I really feel like it's a girl before you found out? So I wouldn't even say it was an inkling. Like me and my husband were pretty much 99% convinced that we were having a boy. Like there was no doubt in our mind. It was just, it was a boy. And when we popped off the cannons and it was pink confetti, we both were like, (laughs) oh, we were so thrown off. And so was Mike my family. And it just was so weird because we were so convinced it was a boy. I don't really, I mean, we have a couple reasons like Sam's family, all of the boys in the Cusick on the Cusick side have at least three boys before they get a girl. Like it's just very boy heavy. So we just, I just have always assumed like, that's what it's going to be like for us. Like I was always worried that maybe we wouldn't get a girl. So (laughs) to have a girl on our first one, I'm like, this is amazing. But we were so thrown off. Like I've never been more shocked in my life. I don't think about anything. It was just so, which is so silly. Cause it's like, of course it could totally be a girl. Right. Why were you? <laughs> and so it was a boy, but for some reason we both were just like, Oh yeah, it's a boy. So we weren't even like doing the, going into the gender reveal. I was kind of just like, this is fun, but like, I'm not like, it's not going to like throw me off. And then it's a girl. So <laughs> mm-hmm. that's so exciting. Oh. What are you having? We don't know. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. Is this your, do you have other kids? No, this is my first. Um, but yeah, we decided to wait. I know. Oh I, my gosh. The waiting's been hard, but, um, and and I have a, I, my, so 99% of our family, so all of his family, all of my family think it's a boy. And I'm like, that's oh why gosh. it's going to be a girl. She's going to come out and surprise us and be like, gotcha. It's totally going to be a girl now. You have to just be ready for it. From experience, be ready for what you don't expect. <laughs> well, I honestly, I think I'm going to be shocked either way. Like, because yeah. my husband is convinced he's going to have all girls. So, um, which I mean, he'd be the best girl dad ever. And um, like... I I don't know. I feel like since everyone thinks it's a boy, if it's a girl, I'm going to be surprised. But if I have a boy, I'm also going to be surprised. So Yeah. Like either way, that's so fun though. Wow. You guys have great self-control. Like Uh I talked about that. I was like, that would be really fun. I just, I know myself and I would not be able to control it. Like I would just be like, "Mm, just tell me. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm so impressed. And that is going to be so fun. You're going to give birth and then be like, wait, what is it? I know. I oh, that's know. so exciting. I'm excited for you guys. Yeah. Good for you. I wish I could be, I mean, maybe like second or third baby, I could do it. I think maybe. Yeah. We'll I think see. it's also easier after you have a boy and a girl. Cause it's like, I already have girl stuff. I already have boy stuff. So maybe yeah, this one can so be true. a surprise, you know? Yeah, exactly. You're like, then you don't have to worry about going out and like buying anything, but yeah. Well, awesome. he had to kind of talk me into it. He really, really wanted it to be a surprise. He's like, there's so few surprises left in the world. And like, 
this will be the greatest surprise ever. So he just, he kind of had to talk me into it. And there's a couple times. So at the ultrasound, when the tech was like going around the bottom area, she's like, okay, look away. So you don't see anything. And I'm like, just let me look. And he's like, look away. I'm like, I just want to peek. I won't even be able to tell. He's like, look away. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's the funny thing. I'm like, they tell us to look away. And then it's like, but do you really believe that I would see and like know what I'm looking at? Right. Half the time I'm like, what is that? Like, what is right there? And like, they have to explain every little thing. Oh, that's so funny. Wow. Good for you guys. That is such good self-control. Yeah. Well, that means you guys will be great parents. You guys have that down. <laughs> that down. <laughs> he, he has it down more than I do. I also, I tried to convince him we're having a super small baby shower and I was like, why don't we turn our baby shower into a surprise gender reveal? And he's like, no. <laughs> Like, well, now it's like you made it this far. You might as well just I know, finish it off. I know. We're excited though. Um, so awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Do you, do you have, um, so you're living in Utah. Do you have any, have you thought about any birthing preferences or how you would like to bring your baby earth side at all? Yeah. So we are going to, um, I'm going to give birth in a hospital. There's a, yeah, there's a hospital around here. I'm going to. I'm also going to have an epidural. <laughs> I have, I've had a lot of anxiety about what the right thing to do is. And of course, there's so many opinions out there. And I feel like with this baby, I'm just very much like, I just want to feel as relaxed and calm as possible. And I know that pain can bring a lot of anxiety for me. So I just, I feel like that's the best way to, that I can do it. But that's kind of how we decided. Obviously, I don't really know what could come. I'm like, I'm very open to anything. And at the end of the day, I will do whatever is best for our baby. So that's kind of the mentality I have, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And and when you say like, you know, there's a lot of different opinions out there. It's, you have to do what the right thing is for you there in most situations, there's not really a right or a wrong. It's what's going to make you feel most comfortable and what's going to help you be able to get through the birthing process because anxiety is something that slows birth down. It does like yeah. help prevent you from opening up and it is really yeah. hard. And I've seen that because I work as a birth doula. I've seen that at a lot of births where, oh, wow. where women can't have a hard time dilating because they're in pain and, and they're, they're so- fighting it and their body's yeah. so tense and then they get the epidural and they dilate so quickly and they're yeah. ready to give birth, you know? So there's no right way to do it. Yeah. And that makes me feel better. Cause obviously I'm like, I don't want to do anything that's not good for the baby. And that's like my main concern, but yeah, that, that is a good perspective. Cause I just, I definitely get that way. I get very anxious, especially when it comes to thing about things about like health and safety. I'm very much like worst case scenario <laughs> type person. And I hate it. Like, I hate that I'm like that, but I just, I feel like for the first, I, and there's just so many unknown, which I'm sure you feel too, but that's amazing that you have, so you have a lot of experience in that area. So I'm sure that's helped with like you going into that yourself. Yeah. It's helped a lot. I mean, I think mostly just because I know all of my options across the board, you know, and I know everything that I could ask for or, you know, or request or anything like that. So yeah, it's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. I would recommend if you feel like you're going to be anxious, um, make the hospital room homey. So bring request that the lights be dimmed, bring LED candles, set them up, maybe a diffuser, mm-hmm. make a playlist, bring a pillow from home and just try to make that environment. Cause if the hospital lights are on and it's bright and there's staff coming in and out of your room, that only yeah. creates more anxiety. But if you have, you know, a picture from your honeymoon with your husband at set up and some of your favorite songs playing and the yeah. lights are dim with led candles, you know, or a blanket or a pillow from home that like helps create that. Okay. I'm in my comfort zone. I can relax or release here, you know, and just kind of make it a smoother transition from home to yeah. hospital. That is so smart and probably so helpful. So thank you for saying that. I honestly didn't even really think that, I mean, I guess I figured you could bring stuff, but like, I probably wouldn't unless you said that. Cause I'd be like, Oh, that people would think that is crazy. Like, no, I can't do that. No, it's not crazy at all. Um, at all. I would definitely, I mean, 
obviously like talk to your doctor. Most hospitals don't have a problem with that. I mean, obviously yeah. not lighting real candles. I Yeah. It's like, it's not <laughs> safe, but no, I think that would totally help. And that's how, I mean, I, I'm just hoping that I can just, you know, just keep it very calm. My husband is the best. He's literally the most chill person ever. Like no matter what's going on, he can always keep his composure and like be calm. And I'm not as much like that. So I'm like, you're going to have to be my like person, which he will be. But yeah, that's, I'm very like, that's the only thing that I'm like, I guess I just don't know how it's going to be. Cause obviously this is my first time and, and birth for everybody is so different. So it's not like I, I can even really like I can hear other people and their experiences, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it's going to be like for me. So mm-hmm. I am excited, nervous. That's like probably the one thing that I've been the most, like I think the most about and just, I can't even really wrap my brain around it. Cause I'm like, it hasn't happened yet. So mm-hmm. I'm just gonna have to take it as it comes. Right. Like there's a human inside of you that's going to come out of you and you're now responsible for <laughs> Yes. Like it will come out. That is what is happening. It's such, it's such a crazy thought. You're like, how is that going to happen? But it does. And millions and millions of people have done it forever. So it's like, it obviously happens. It works. Everything goes how it should, but it Mm -hmm. is a crazy thing to think about. Yeah. I think that that's one conversation. I I always look at my husband. I'm like, we're going to be parents. Like, yeah. I'm, I always, I'm like, I'm just a kid myself. <laughs> like how, <laughs> how am I? Yeah, and I'm not. I feel that too. I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. Like what? How, what? And it's also crazy to think like we already kind of are mm-hmm. like the baby that's going to come out is like in there. So it's just, it's so bizarre to think about it. Like eventually, and I'm sure it's even crazier for you. Cause I mean, you're further along. So you like feel things. You feel a foot, you feel a hand. And it's like, those are the same feet and same hands that you will be like raising now. Yeah. It's just so crazy. Yeah, it is. There's a, uh, an app on my phone that shows you the exact size that the baby's hand is right now. And oh, wait, is it Ovia? Yeah. Ovia. <laughs> it shows you like what it would look like on the screen. Yes. I love, I have that one too. And today I just took it and I, I was showing my mom, I'm like, look, that's like the size of the foot that's in me. Like that is crazy. <laughs> That's so cute though. It's so cute. It's like, oh, I just started feeling her move like maybe two weeks ago and it's been the best. Oh. Like I have to say that has calmed. I mean, I wouldn't say I've been super stressed, but like any sort of like worries or wonders, the second you can feel them moving, it just feels so, you just, I feel so much more calm about it. Cause I'm like, okay, there you are. Like you're there, you're in here, you're moving around. Like it just, I feel like it's such a nice thing to feel. I'm sure as they get bigger and they're like kicking your rib cage, you're like, no, I'm good without that. But, yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> but it is fun to feel movement in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it definitely helps with the connecting and, and bonding and everything too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so do you guys have any names picked out? We don't. Like we, we're having such a hard time. We had a lot of boy names picked out, which... I actually kind of like um, some boy names for girl names too. Like I kind of like just like gender neutral names. So we're seeing if any that we loved for the boys like kind of cross over, but we're having a hard time. And also we're both very much like we don't want to pick a name until we see her. Mm-hmm. We both, So I feel like we're going to try to have a list of like three or four names that we like and then decide once we see her but I'm like I don't think we can go in like totally blind but then at the same time I hear people like show like give birth have a list of names and then pick something totally different so we're kind of open to that and realize that a lot of it will be based off of when we see her and what we feel like she looks like I guess I don't know (laughs) Mm -hmm. and that's fun because then nobody will know her name until she's born yeah that too also it's like we've had a really hard time because I mean, naturally people always just want to share their opinions. Mm-hmm. So anytime we've ever had a name that we liked, if we've ever said it, like sometimes people are like, oh, cool. That's awesome. But then some people are like, oh, really? Like, do you like that? <laughs> and we're just like, oh. So now we just like, don't even want to like have too many because it's like the second you say it to somebody and they say that they don't like it, it's like, well, I don't really care. But at the same time, you're like... I don't want to know that people don't like their name. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like that's also a driving, a thing for us too, is we're less like 
inclined to have a bunch of names that we're sharing because we don't really want to hear people's thoughts about them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's kind of terrible, but we just are like, we just want to like decide for ourselves and not feel like it's influenced by anybody else's opinion. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that that's smart though. Cause yeah, like you said, everybody has an opinion or they knew someone that they didn't like with that name or yes, exactly you know it's just it's like it's so hard and I'm like it's hard to like reinvent the wheel of names like yeah it's very <laughs> rare where you find a name where you're like I don't know anybody by that name like you have like there's just a lot of people out there so of course you're gonna know somebody with this name and yeah it's mm-hmm. funny how that is but what have you gotten any uh pregnancy advice at all from people Yes and no. Like I've gotten a ton, but I will say, which I'm kind of grateful for a lot of advice. Like if I ask specific questions, like I remember with nausea, like I remember asking people, what did you do for that? A lot of people told me that switching to taking prenatals instead of taking it in the morning, start to like take it at night before you go to sleep. And that was one of the biggest things that helped with my nausea was taking it at at night. I don't know if it's because I was nauseous, but I was asleep. So I wasn't aware, Mm -hmm. but that was helpful. So like detailed things like that. Yes. But as far as like how to parent and all that kind of stuff, it's been really cool because naturally, I mean, my parents have given me advice by just raising me. Like I'm going to remember the things that they did and all the lessons they taught me, but everybody's kind of just been like very supportive in the sense of you are going to have your own experience and listen to like what you feel is right. That's the best thing that a lot of moms have told me is just like, there's going to be times where you have instincts and you should follow them. Like you should listen to what you think. Don't try to like please anybody else. Don't try to take in anybody else's opinions too much. Cause at the end of the day, you're going to know your child better than anybody else. And you know yourself better than anyone else. So listen to what you feel is best for you. And I've been really grateful for that because I, I know people have their opinions and I love that. And I love to hear, but I'm grateful that the people that love me and surround me haven't been like trying to force their opinions down my throat. You know, I just think that's something that can be hard and is hard to shake if that's something that you're hearing constantly. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's really amazing advice. And it's awesome that, like you said, you have people in your life that are like, you don't have to do it this way or that way. You're going to learn, you know, like Basically yeah. you and your kid are going to, you guys are going to teach each other like how, how this works basically. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, I'm sure I'll have a million questions and all that, but it's just been comforting to know that mostly like people, all the people around me are very much like whatever you feel is best, we support you and we're going to help you through it. So that's been very comforting. Mm-hmm. What are you most looking forward to about becoming a mom? Oh my goodness. So many things. I mean, I am just so excited to love and support my child. Like that is one of the biggest things I value and feel grateful for about my childhood, about growing up and about the relationship I have with my parents is that they are truly my biggest supporters and always have my best interest. And I just think that is something so special. And I don't want to say that like, I know a ton of people who don't have that. I have there are so many incredible parents out there, but that is going to be the most important thing for me is to support my children and make sure they know that I love them no matter what they want to do or who they want to be. And I'm really excited to give that love because I already feel it. And I'm just so excited to be able to give that to my child that Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And it's awesome. Like you said, like you, you learn so much from your parents and, I think that when you have parents that that support you and in your dreams and your passions and let you kind of you know do your own path it's so nice yeah. because you don't feel forced into like oh well I have to go to college and get this degree and work toward this one thing or I have to you know play these sports because my parents want me to or or anything like that it's so nice when they let you find your own passions and, and go for them. Absolutely. And that's like, that's the only thing I'll ever care about. I, a lot of people ask me like, are you going to have your daughter dance? And I would love to support her in dance. I mean, it would be very natural for me because I know a lot about it. I'd be able to help out a lot. But at the end of the day, the thing I care about most is that my kids, my girl and my kids have something that they're passionate about and they work hard at it because I believe like, 
no matter what my passion would have been, my parents would have pushed me in the same way. They would have told, taught me to work hard for what I believe in and commit to things. And that's something that I feel like instilled really great values that has helped me in all aspects of my life. So I just, that's all I care about. I just want my kids to have passions and to be hard workers and to go after the things that they want. And whatever that is, I'm going to help them with that. But but yeah, it's funny because everybody's like, oh, your kids are for sure going to dance. And I'm like, absolutely, if they want to, that's 100%. I would love to support them in that. But that's not going to be what I expect them to do just because mm-hmm. I did it. Yeah. What are you looking forward to watching Sam become a dad? Oh, my goodness. That is, I have to say, that's probably up there with like one of the things I'm most excited about. Uh-huh. Specifically to be a girl dad because he is... He's a, he is like a man's man. All the activities that he loves to do are very like outdoorsy and not that girls don't do that, but it's just, he's more, he leans more on the side of like those kind of activities. And I'm so excited because throughout our marriage and ever since I met him, we met when we were 15 years old. It's like, he has that side and he is very much into those like manly activities, but he is truly a softy at heart. And it's so fun to watch him interact with, we have a little niece and he's just so tender and sweet with her. And I'm just so excited to see him do that with our little girl. And then also to take her fishing and mm-hmm. show him all those fun things. Cause that's something that I loved about my childhood as well as, I mean, I was a dancer. That was like my thing, but our dad had us doing all sorts of things. We weren't just like a one-sided type of family. So I'm really excited for us to just be kind of an all encompassing. And yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's, I think that makes sense. I guess. I don't know if all those words, no, put it together. does. It does. My head, I see it and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so fun. So you guys have known each other for a really long time. Yes. Yeah. We met, I mean, we went to high school together. So we met in ninth grade. I mean, we weren't dating in ninth grade, but we knew each other. We started dating our junior year. Uh, We were friends for about a year before that. Yeah. And we started dating our junior year and then have been together ever since. So we've known each other now for like a little over 11 years and we've been together for, oh gosh, like nine of those years, married for five. So Mm -hmm known each other for a really long time. And it's, I, I love that. It's kind of like we grew up together. We've been able to continue to grow together. And I feel like that's been really good for our marriage. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's awesome that, I mean, you see a lot of people who start dating in high school and then they want to pursue their dreams and they don't end up together, you know, because. Oh yeah. It, it makes them drift apart. And right. I think that totally could have happened with Sam and I. I mean, I graduated high school and I was off to LA and I was in LA living by myself for years. And he was here, went to college, he lived in Utah. And that totally could have like just derailed us and been like, okay, we're going our separate ways. But what was really special is it actually helped us grow together even more because we both valued and recognizes each other's um, passions and Mm -hmm. like our work ethic. And we we're okay with that and happy to support from a distance. And it just made us closer. It helped us build trust and relationship support and so many lessons that we probably wouldn't have learned if we hadn't um, kind of gone and done the long distance thing for so long. So yeah, I think, I think it's interesting because for some people that's what completely derails the relationship, but for us, it's what kind of solidified it. So yeah, you guys are going to be awesome parents. Oh, thanks. I hope so. (laughs) I hope so. I'm like, I I guess we're, no matter what, we're going to be parents. So I'm hoping that we are ready for it, but. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. Um, I don't think I have any other questions for you. I'm, I'm so excited to finish following your journey and to see, um, see your little girl and what you end up naming her. (laughs) I know. And I'm so excited to see what you are having. Like, I'm so excited for you. I still can't get over how fun that is going to be for you guys to just be like, okay, here yeah. we go. I know. That's um, awesome. We asked if like my husband Vito can announce the gender. So I want him to be able to tell me what the baby is. So yeah. um, we'll see. But I've also been at births before where the nurse is like, it's a boy. And I'm like, oh, the dad oh, wanted yeah. to say it. <laughs> but it happens. Um, oh shoot, you cut out. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, shoot. It just cut out for a second. You said the nurse says it's a boy and then oh. I didn't hear anything after. 
Yeah, like I've just I've been at births where the nurse is like, oh, it's a boy, and it's like, oh, the dad actually wanted to announce it, you know, like <laughs> so you're like gonna be very like you just make sure you tell everyone in the room, like, okay, guys, I know. Let let my husband say it. I'm gonna have um, the baby and just be like, nobody say anything. <laughs> yeah, don't say a word. I know. That's so true. Gosh, that's so funny. Well, I'm excited for you guys. That's pretty yeah, awesome. Thank you. And and we're excited for you. I mean, also, do you Quick last question. I mean, do you have plans on when, like how much time you're going to take off when you plan on going back to Dancing with the Stars? So as of now, um, I am planning and excited about going back for the next fall season. I will have our baby in November. So that would give me about nine months. And I feel, I feel good about that time, but I also am very much aware that like I don't know how it's going to be for me and Mm -hmm. things could come up. It could be totally different, whether that's physically or maybe mentally, I'm not quite ready to start working again. And I'm very much ready for those things. And I'm not, I don't want to be naive and say that everything is going to work out perfectly like I would expect it to. So I have that in mind, but as of now, the plan is to do everything I can to get back into shape and back ready to um, be a part of the next fall season. So that's kind of the plan, but We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and share all about your pregnancy journey with us. And like I said, we're definitely going to be looking forward to your birth. Where can people find and follow you at? So uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's at Lynn's Arnold. And then I'm going to be doing, uh, me and my sisters have a YouTube channel. It's called the Arnold sisters. And, um, it's all of us doing videos together, but I've been doing a ton of pregnancy updates on there and I plan to continue to post videos and kind of keep everybody informed on that. So that's where you're going to see a lot of the in-depth stuff about my pregnancy. So definitely go check that out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. So good to do this. So thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. I had such a great time interviewing Lindsay and I'm definitely going to be following her journey and waiting to see when her baby arrives and how everything turns out for her. Uh, If you guys are listening, make sure you hit the subscription button and leave us a review and let me know what interviews you're enjoying, what you want to hear more of. Reach out to me on social media. You can follow us at Miraculous Mamas on Instagram, Twitter, MiraculousMamas.com. Uh, basically anywhere you can find us there. And you can stay up to date on my pregnancy blog, which is getting a little cray, guys. I'm 38 weeks. So um, I go into details there of everything from birth plan details to uh, struggles and what we're planning and how we're preparing. But it's definitely been a journey. It's getting harder and harder. (laughs) So, uh, but we're, we're really excited. So you can stay up to date at miraculousmamas.com. Make sure that you're following along with these interviews. Again, um, just so you guys know, I do have a few interviews pre-recorded. So I am going to have, um, I did one on physical therapy for, for pelvic floor therapy We have one on uh, chiropractic care and a couple other ones, one with Jessica Nixon. And uh, those are going to be playing in the next month. So I do have a few interviews pre-recorded. So when I go into labor, the podcast will continue on. And then as soon as I am able and ready Uh, Vito and I are definitely going to be filling you guys in on the birth story and how everything goes. We're just so excited and we're excited to to share that with you. Um, But we also definitely want to give ourselves a little bit of time after the baby's born just to process everything and then and then get ourselves together in order to, to share with you. So, uh, I do have some awesome episodes recorded, loaded with information to help you guys continue to make the best decisions for you and your family. And just to continue to learn and grow on this journey with me. I am so excited to keep you guys posted on everything. Thank you for coming on this journey with me and continuing to learn and listen to me interview every single week. 
Uh, I've, n- I've noticed listening back on some episodes, I'm like, wow, I have a little bit of pregnancy brain sometimes, but I think that that's very understandable. Uh, but yeah, guys, I just, I love you so much and your support and your listens mean so much to me and my family. I'm really passionate about this work and I'm truly grateful that you guys are on this journey with me. I will talk to you next week with a midwife who um, I met working at the hospital. She's awesome and she's going to answer all of your guys' questions that I asked in the Facebook group. So look out for that. All right. I love you guys. I hope that you are having an amazing August so far. Talk to you soon. Bye.